guys, welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. The past few weeks have been nuts and I'm quite frankly running out of time. So I thought today that I would show you how I bag fish and package them for shipping. Now, you'll rem if you remember correctly, uh, we addressed this with Cory Doris with my friend Matt and I'm shipping a couple of those today, but I just thought I'd show you sort of my process and what's worked for me over the years. So I've already caught the critters and have them in clean shipping water. These are assassin snails. Um, I don't use a ton of water for snails. It seems to work out best that way. Again, a lot of air, not a lot of water. I like to tie my bags. That's personal preference. If I'm using breather bags, I like to also use a rubber band. I double bag every bag no matter what, if it's these two mil or three mil bags, which are just your plain plastic fish bags. That helps, um, if they get any sort of leak, it helps to keep it from making the box soaked and it also helps them keep their air. I also like to put a label on each bag, that's sort of redundancy. My shipping list and my labels helps prevent mistakes. I mean, I'm only human. I still make them sometimes, but I try my best to uh, to reduce the amount that I have through redundancy. Um, with fish, I like to add a teeny tiny piece of the poly filter I've talked about a bunch of times. And I do that simply to absorb ammonia. And that protects the fish in a few ways. It prevents them from getting ammonia burn, but it also, if, if for some reason a fish would get trapped in the corner and die in transit, it also protects the other fish in the bag from being badly damaged and hopefully dying. Doesn't happen that often, but it can happen, especially with these little tiny fish. So these are Coriodorus pygmaeus, and I put them in these small bags because the corners tend to trap them less. Again, one-third air or one-third water, two-thirds air. I do have oxygen available, but I don't use it for every species, mainly just for the ones that have the high oxygen requirements, like when I'm shipping the hillstream loaches and gobies. Squeezing out the extra air in the bags. My guard just slapped the water at me. Apparently they want to be fed. So my labels say quantity, species, and who it's going to. I do sometimes use breather bags as well, specifically for really tiny fish. Or if it's the time of year where I know I need to use a heat pack, but the daytimes are gonna get a bit warmer than I'm comfortable with, using a breather bag allows for the oxygen exchange. So the warmer temperatures can deplete the oxygen and sometimes that makes things a little safer. But I don't use them for all species. Just kind of go by instinct on that, how far it's going, how fast it's going. The temperature there, the temperature here, all that kind of stuff. Um, heat packs are not an exact science. They have a curve, so the longer acting they are, the longer their curve is. The shorter acting they are, the faster and higher the temperature they get. Now yesterday was an insane day. I had a ridiculous quantity of boxes going out. So you'll see in a minute that my packing station is absolutely trashed. These are shrimp, so I'm going to put them in a breather bag just because it allows me to um, package them a little bit more carefully within the box. There's a little bit of moss in there, but I'm gonna add some of this weird uh, 
polyfill type stuff in there for them to cling to. Now the breather bags seem to have almost a memory and like to try and come untied. So I've started using rubber bands on them as well just to prevent leakage. And what I like to do with them also is let them sit for about 10 minutes or so before I box them up. That way I can see if the seam at the bottom has any leaks because they've gotten sort of unreliable over the years. And occasionally this bottom seat seam will develop a small leak which doesn't lead to longevity in shipping. So let's go to the shipping station and I'll show you how I make my boxes. So we're now in my packing station and office, which I have to tell you is an absolute disaster right now. I have had a busy few weeks and um, I have hardscape everywhere and boxes everywhere and it's trashed. It's going to take me a solid day to clean up this mess. Anyway, so what I do is I've bought a thick wall white cardboard boxes and I like the white because I feel like um, if they don't blend as well to all the other boxes they get handled a little bit gentler well that may not necessarily be true it makes me feel better so I do it uh, I don't use preformed styros mainly because I don't have room to store them so I use this insulation that's rated for pretty cold temperatures that gives structure to the box and sort of holds in some of the some of the warmth or cool in the summer months and I just cut everything to fit some people use um, a hot wire cutter I, I would never leave it set up so I do not now I generally ship FedEx I've had the best luck with timeliness as well as accurate tracking through FedEx. They also will allow you to insure your packages and actually honor that insurance. Uh, in order to get those clearances, you have to submit packaging to FedEx for approval for shipping live critters. In my mind, it's totally worth it um, just because you know, things happen and it's nice to be able to have that guarantee for my customers. All right, so I have the styrofoam cut to fit the box. And then I get packing materials. I prefer to use newspaper. And I'll line the box with newspaper. like so and then I place the critters in the box now if you're using a breather bag it's best to wrap it in a piece of newspaper you don't want to interrupt the oxygen exchange by it touching other plastic like so and then I just add more packaging materials until those bags can't shift around and transit. it. Some people like to use uh, that blowable um, insulation. I just think it's a mess when I open it, so I prefer to use newspaper. Now, my daytimes are only in the 50s and the overnights are in the 40s. So I am going to use a heat pack. This shipment is going overnight, so I'm going to use a 40 hour heat pack. Just in case it should be delayed, that gives me just a little bit of insurance that if it's late, it won't sit there and freeze. 
And I also wrap my heat pack in a piece of paper with the red strip facing into the box. Put my lid on. See, everything fits pretty tightly. Close it up. Since it's live fish, put some live fish stickers. At some point, I'll get boxes printed, but I really try and keep my costs down for my customers. So right now, I uh, just absorb the cost of heat packs and packaging materials. After that, I weigh it, make a label, and it's ready to go. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. Before too long here, I'm going to be starting a series on summer tubbing, which is when I set up container bins in my yard to breed fish, so keep your eyes peeled for that. As always, if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, let me know in the comments below.